Good morning, St. Sabina. Just really quickly, I just want to thank all my friends and family who came out and supported and those who've been supportive all these years. I also want to take a moment to thank all of the mentors in my life. I don't care how old you are, you need mentors. And I've been blessed to have not only mentors with my parents, but also um, a mentor, Lisa Ramsey, I want to recognize because she helped to mentor me at the very beginning when I first became executive director. And so I want to thank you, Lisa, for that. And I want to thank my mentor, Father Flager. Um, he allowed me to rise into my crown. And so I thank you, Pastor. Love you. It's so funny when you stand at a pulpit like this and you're being honored and you're getting all these accolades and you say to yourself, God, I know the truth. I know that if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. And if it wasn't for you and your grace, I wouldn't have made it. And I think about how God has helped me through this whole process, how he ordered my steps, how he allowed me to even come and start working at the ARC and how he allowed me the opportunity to become the executive director. And I remember when that time came when the opportunity presented itself for me to apply to become the executive director, I was scared out of my mind. I was like, oh, sugar dugger. And I did not say sugar dugger, but we're in church. And it was kind of like that experience that Moses had when God told him, Moses, I'm calling you to go save your people. I'm calling you to tell Pharaoh about himself. I'm calling you to bring him out of Egypt. I'm telling you all this. And Moses was shaking in his boots like, wait a minute, God, I stutter. I, I'm not able to do all this. And I felt the same way. I'm like, wait a minute, God, I'm too young for this. I'm not prepared for all this. And God said, wait a minute. I choose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. I choose the weak to shame the strong. I don't call those people who are equipped. I equip those who I call. And so I accepted the position and there were so many lessons that I learned along the way. And I'm just gonna share a few of them and I'm gonna take my seat. One thing that I learned is that when you step into a position of power, power can change you. Yeah. And power can also reveal things about yourself that you didn't know and other people didn't know. It all comes out. And God showed me some things that I didn't like about myself and I had to change. And so when you step into a position of power, understand that you can't abuse that power. But as surely as God puts you in that position, he could surely take it away. So be careful when you're elevated into a position of power. Another thing was I experienced pressure that I had never experienced before. It was because I stepped into a position, it was a calling that God put me in. And so here's the thing, when you are in a position like that, that pressure, if you're standing in your own strength, will break you. You have to be willing and you have to know that you can only stand in the strength of God to be able to sustain yourself. That's lesson number two. Another thing that I learned was that title doesn't earn you respect. Wow. You earn that through modeling what you preach and caring for others. You also earn that by being vulnerable enough to admit when you're wrong. And when the people who you are in leadership over tell you you're wrong, being willing to apologize. Another thing that I learned is that when we're doing this work that God's calling us to do, we're not, we're not the owners of anything. I had to realize this ain't my ark. This ain't even Father Flake's ark. This is God's ark. So those moments when I was freaking out about how to make payroll and if we were going to get this grant, I remember one time I was literally almost laid out in Father Flager's office crying because I missed the deadline for this grant. I realized, I'm like, you know what, God, this is your stuff. Yeah. I'm just here trying to be a good steward over it. And every time in the 11th hour, sometimes it was 1159, God came through. Yeah. And that's what helped to build my faith. And I'm thankful for those experiences. Yeah. 
I also learned you are only as strong as the people you lead. Right. You could be a rock star and have all these gifts, but if you don't have anybody following you, or if you do not see the fruit of what you sowed into those people, then you're not a good leader. Right. Good. This position also forced me to change my relationship with failure. I realized during my time in this role that I struggled with this spirit of perfectionism. Anytime that I made mistakes, I would just freak out. And I realized that that spirit is actually grounded in the spirit of pride, but that's a whole nother sermon in itself. <laughs> but I heard this message from this gentleman on my favorite show, Impact Theory. His name is Preston Smiles. And he said something that changed how I looked at failure. He said, every experience is neutral until you assign a meaning to it. Yeah. I'm gonna say that one more time, make sure you caught that. Every experience is neutral until you assign a meaning to it. So say for example, it's a sunny day outside. One person will be like, bless the Lord, it is so sunny outside, I just love the warmth of the sun on my face. And another person is going to be like, oh my God, it's so hot outside, I can't take it. You know the Debbie Downers, no offense to the Debbies out there, but you know that person who just complains about everything. <laughs> Even those experiences that seem to be negative, say for instance, you got in a car accident and your car was totaled. One person would be like, man, I have the worst luck. I cannot believe that God let this happen to me. And another person would be like, thank you, God. My car can be replaced, but my life can't. Every experience is neutral until you assign a meaning behind it. And so I had to change the way that I looked at failure and understand that failure is not a reflection of who I am. It's a part of the lessons that I needed to learn to continue to grow. Failure is a part of the growth process. Yeah. Few last points. I learned that leadership is sacrificial. Yeah. There's been so many times in this process where I was like, you know what, pastor, I love you, but I'm out. I wanna go back to a nine to five. I wanna just clock in, clock out. This is too much pressure, right? And sometimes as a leader, you have to stand by yourself. You have to stand alone. And that's hard when people are looking at you mad because they don't understand the decisions that you had to make that are really good for them, right? So you have to understand that sometimes as a leader, you're going to have to stand alone, but you can't do this alone either. You need people and you cannot allow pride to get in the way of you asking for help when you're down. Sometimes as leaders, we wear this mask. I'm actually writing a book right now about wearing a mask and how sometimes we're so broken inside that we put on this face, we've mastered this mask, right? But in, deep down inside, we're hurting. Now granted, as a leader, you can't walk around the place looking like you're down all the time. The world can't necessarily see everything, but you do need people in your life who you can be vulnerable in front of of, who you can cry in front of. You need people who you can release in front of. You can't always have this mask on because it's going to eventually ripple down into those people who you are leading. So you have to learn to be vulnerable as a leader. Yeah. I don't have much time, so this is the last thought I'm going to share is that scripture tells us that we are called to do everything as if we're doing it unto the Lord. Yeah. Remember, that God honors everything that you do in the dark that is unseen. This was my assignment for the last 11 years, and I'm thankful for it, and I tried to do it to the best of my ability. So I'm telling you to do the same. If God gives you an assignment, do it to the best of your ability. God honors that. And trust me, he will bless you. Thank you.